to many, crypto not looking too good right now, but when you peel back the layers, you peel back that data, a lot of it actually makes sense what is happening right now with the current consolidation in crypto. That's what I want to break down in this video. A lot to go over, so please hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let's jump into the video. What we're going to do is we're going to actually start with just discussing total crypto market cap and what's going on on this chart. We're going to pivot to Bitcoin, dissect the weekly and the daily, the potential inverse head and shoulders that we've been tracking. So let's just do this and let's start with the total crypto market cap. There's just something I wanted to point out before we really dive into Bitcoin charts and talk about what's going on. So I've been watching this chart and right now, if, and we've talked about this, Bitcoin having right here, I've been waiting to see if we get this consolidation into this 20-week moving average right there. Now, we've talked about every cycle after the halving. That's an area where total crypto market cap has consolidated, right? There's last halving. Here's the halving all the way back here, 2016. Now, what I do want to point out is you can see a massive wick below that area. That was right after Bitcoin, or yeah, the Bitcoin halving in 2016. But there was generally that support there. So right now, though, and this is where I'm really just raising an eyebrow, we're... We have, by the way, five days, 11 hours of the weekly candle, but you can see this weekly candle currently below that 20-week moving average. It's really interesting, more reminiscent to that two cycles ago in 2016 timeframe. The other thing I want to mention, and this is really going to be a segue to Bitcoin, it's, the question, it's answering the question, what happens if, if we don't close the candle here? What happens if we had to start trickling down, consolidating in a way that we've never seen crypto markets consolidate. There could be people that are just like, that's it. I mean, that's the, that's the end of the move. That's the end of the bear move. I refuse to believe that because there is so much conflicting data to say that that was the bull market. It's over. We're entering a bear market right now with the Bitcoin having that just happened, everything else, all these other technical indicators that we've gone over on this YouTube channel. But what I do want to say is, and this is what would be, be very interesting to track in this bull cycle if we do start consolidating further down and maybe we need to hit the 50-week moving average this time around, that is to say something different would be happening this cycle than previous cycles. And here's what I want to point out. Number one, right here, that was the beginning of the end for the last bull market and it actually did make a move below the 20-week. The only difference is we're more in this general vicinity, I believe. We have a ton of time left for this bull market. So if we're falling to this area, and this is an if, we might get support this week at the 20-week moving average. But if we are falling to this area, this could play into what we've been discussing on the Bitcoin charts. And that is to say, this super cycle in play right now. Because if there's going to be a super cycle, and if, if we're going to have sustained higher highs and higher lows across the board for crypto... There's going to need to be massive consolidation, and that looks like consolidation like this, right, before going higher. And so that's one thing I'm watching on total crypto market cap is how this chart plays into all of the other just data points that we've been tracking that play into a super cycle. So let's talk about Bitcoin. What is going on with the current consolidation? There's a really key level that is getting very close to being hit. And that's what we're going to talk about. And before we actually break down those charts, I just want to do a quick shout out to our sponsor of today's video. This is uh, iTrust Capital, Crypto IRA, invest crypto using your IRA. I think there's a hesitancy to a lot of people in the crypto space. And I want to actually go over that one hesitancy that I think a lot of people have. But this is where iTrust Capital clients can buy and sell cryptos 24-7 in a tax-advantaged IRA. So there are so many tax benefits to having an IRA, especially if you're a long-term person in this space like I am. And what I wanted to point out real quick, and then I'll go over that one hesitancy that I think people have. Look at this, look at this setup. First off, there's a 1% crypto transaction fee. So if you're going to move Bitcoin, or let's say you're going to move an altcoin at the top of a bull market, that's, if that's the play, to Bitcoin. You're like, all right, I think we're at the top. I think Bitcoin dominance is about to go, go back up. I'm going to move my altcoin to Bitcoin. There's a 1% crypto transaction fee. That's it. But look at this. There's, when you're managing this account, there's no monthly account fee. There's no annual maintenance fees. There's no onboarding fees. So you can just go sign up on this very simple form. No onboarding fees. 
no zero dollar storage fees, no commission fees, no withdrawal fees, no transfer fees, no accounting closing fees. These things, this list here is pretty much unprecedented in, in this space and in a product like this. So what I wanted to go over real quick is this, especially because we're in the crypto space. Off balance sheet versus on balance sheet. It's important to point out what iTrust does here. Multiple events in 2022, as you know, if you were here, showed the risk of crypto industry's common practice of including client assets on the balance sheet. It's a no-no. And we saw what happened to companies that did this. Our clients' assets are held in custodial accounts with a regulated chartered trust entity and all assets are off balance sheet. That is so important. Holding clients' assets off balance sheet means that assets are not reflected in the company's financial statements or not used by the company to impact the company's financial ratios or leverage. That's the hesitancy. hesitancy. I think when there's products like this in crypto, people are like, man, that's too risky. I trust Cap- Capital is doing this so by the books, so on point. They survived the whole mess of 2022 with ease and just a great product. So hit the, hit the link below, CCV link below, get started with them. Again, the sign up for an inc- incredibly easy to create your account and just special thanks to I- I trust for being an awesome sponsor for Crypto Capital Venture. So let's go to weekly chart on Bitcoin. So in playing into that super cycle, meaning we're going to need more consolidation on the total crypto market cap. If it's going to happen this early, this move maybe to a 50 week moving average. Well, here's the thing. The super cycle data, one piece of data that I am very much watching is this weekly moving average, this 20 week crossing above the 50. I've been talking about this recently. And by the way, we're going to dig into the the short term charts next, but this 20 week crossing above the 50. We've said already that every cycle, this has gotten longer. So meaning from that cross, the the 20 above the 50 in 2012, basically, to the top of the bull market was 504 days. And then that next cycle, the end of the bear market, exiting the bear market from that 20 above the 50 to the top of the bull cycle, 777 days. And then last cycle, 875 days. So here's the thing. Right now, this cycle, and this is one piece of data that for me is just saying the bull market is just starting. Right now, we're 400 some days after that happening. We're, at the, we're towards the beginning. But if this, if this progresses and it gets longer every cycle, let's just say we're somewhere in the 900s, not even far, far, you know, far ahead of last cycle, 875 days, but let's say we're 910. That takes us to fall of 2025. Right now, it's the summer of 2024. We will need consolidation for a cycle like that. And that's one piece of data. Now, in speaking to that, similar to what we've talked about on the total crypto market cap, we're kind of looking at something similar on the Bitcoin weekly. And that is to say that that move to support at the 20-week moving average right after the halving is a move we like to see after the Bitcoin halving. What if that doesn't happen? And again, just like the total crypto market cap chart, we're kind of in a similar environment, falling to the 50. But the thing is, we're not in this kind of end of bull market territory, in my view. And this would be another hint, I think, of necessary super cycle consolidation. That's what I'm going to call it. People will say I'm overly bullish. People will say uh, it's, this is all copium. But this is the way that I'm looking at these charts. There, for me, just gen- I just genuinely don't think that this was a bull market and it's over. I could be wrong. I, I might be wrong. But this is just me putting my opinion out there, me tracking my crypto journey, tracking the data. So with that being said, this is where things get critical in the, in the, in the week ahead, like five days, 11 hours left of this current weekly. And again, if this breaks and we start falling right now for Bitcoin, I don't think, I don't think that's a long-term bad thing. But let's, let's start digging into this on the daily. And this is where things become important, especially with what I talked about in yesterday's video. Check this quick clip out real quick. Like I said last week, everything is noise until we see the Bitcoin price battle at the short-term holder cost basis. Now at 63,800, we're close to a test. So we, we're close to a test. And, and notice what he says here, by the way. 
or he's saying, will it be support, 63,800 area, or will price break below leading to weeks, months of chop? Weeks, months of chop in the middle of a bull, for me, usually leads to all-time highs, new all-time highs. But let's go look at that, 63,800. Now, when I did the video yesterday, we weren't quite there yet, but, and, and here's our speculation from yesterday's video. You can see that right shoulder potentially set up going down to like 62, but check this out. That $63,800 area that he was mentioning, 62, six, is it 62, 63, 8? 63, 8. We go to the daily chart, 63, 8. Look at this. Pretty much tested. Pretty much tested. And then if we go look at the weekly chart, obviously, there's that 20-week moving average. It is pretty much being tested. It's, it's right there. So... Here's where things are really getting crazy for Bitcoin. We're at a, a kind of a macro on-chain type of data point that is critical support. But in this environment where we zoom out on a Bitcoin chart, we, though the pain will be real, we could absolutely get consoli further consolidation to the downside and be completely okay. But let's talk about this. Maybe none of that happens and we get support in this general range. Now, I, I obviously, we're looking at his key area in terms of the short-term hold across basis. I think that's a key area. The weekly chart is a key area. But for me, on these shorter-term charts, this is a daily zoomed in. I'm allowing what I've talked about yesterday. That is a swing low to swing high. There could be volatility to this, low, this higher low Fibonacci, and that is around 62,300 to around 59,800. I think we could still be very close to all-time highs if Bitcoin sees support even there. But we'd have to see how Bitcoin kind of interacts with that area. But we could see a right shoulder, I believe, going down to, into that area and still be okay. Obviously, in the short term, I'm very much curious of this area, that on-chain short-term hold, holder basis, cost basis area, 63,800, and the weekly, the 20-week moving average over here, right? I'm very curious of those areas. But on the daily, I'm allowing structure of a right shoulder, and that could be what it looks like. Maybe we go down into this area. So that's my fail-safe support for, for Bitcoin. I think often is the times where we will see a Fibonacci kind of being that fail-safe support. What if we get a bounce before then? Time will tell. One thing I know is you open up the RSI, the daily RSI, it is cooling down. And what happens when we're cooling down in the state of fear, in the state of, oh man, it's, just, it's ending, it's over. We're falling into this oversold territory. Bounce. Are we getting close to that happening? Bounce. That is what I'm watching on the short term. But I do, I do like to keep in mind the macro and the bullish case for crypto right now, for me, says we're just getting started. These are my thoughts for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate you cruising by. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.